Hi Aquarius, welcome to March. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I start your reading, I want to talk about what's coming up this month. We have a new moon in Pisces on the 2nd. Venus and Mars move into your sign on the 7th. We have a full moon in Virgo on the 18th. And the sun moves into Aries on the 20th to start the new astrological year. So let's see what the cards say about love and relationships for the month of March 2022. For Aquarius, what does Aquarius need to know about love and relationships for March? What's coming up for Aquarius? Just having Venus in your sign is going to attract love. When Venus moves into Aquarius, um, you're going to be attracting love from every all corners. You're going to be looking more beautiful or handsome, feeling more charming, more sociable. And Mars gives you the courage to take action. So if there's someone you're interested in, uh, go for it. Okay, let's see. What does Aquarius need to know? The Wheel of Fortune, the Knight of Wands, the Five of Swords in the past, the Eight of Wands, the Five of Cups, the Ace of Pentacles, the Nine of Cups, the Judgment, the King of Pentacles, the Nine of Swords. <clears throat> and the card at the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Cups. Okay, so Wheel of Fortune. Um, if you've been going through a difficult time, which you have because you have the Five of Swords back here in the past, um, things are changing. This month, new energy is coming in. Um, you're ready for adventure. A new adventure with the Knight of Wands. This could be a change of job even or a change of residence. Because <clears throat> I'm seeing there's love here, but there's also career success. You have the Ace of Pentacles coming up. That could be a job offer. <clears throat> In the past, you had the Five of Swords. So you might have been dealing with a relationship or a toxic situation where you felt, um, I don't know, either bullied or someone was not playing fair. This, this is not a nice card. The people involved in this... Um, you may have felt victimized by someone's um, hostility or someone working against you. Or if you were in a, in a relationship, it could be toxic energy. Um, where the person you love, even though you love the person, there are certain things about them you can't change. So the Five of Swords is saying, you know, you have to accept someone for who they are. Uh, because this is not this is who they are. You know, they can't change who they are. It's like their basic character. So you have to either say, um, can I accept this person and live with what I know I can't fix or change, or should I cut my losses and move on? Um, <clears throat> the Eight of Wands in the recent past is saying, you know, doors are going to be opening up. There could even be some jealousy. Maybe this person was really jealous or people were around you were jealous. And you were dealing with their their hostility. So this is like a toxic environment, either at work or in relationship. The Eight of Wands is about new beginnings, things happening quickly, opportunities coming in. So um, I feel like you could be thinking about leaving a relationship that if you're in a toxic situation, whether it's a relationship or a work environment, you might be thinking about leaving it. The Five of Cups here, this is a card of regret and sorrow. So you may, maybe you're having some second thoughts about some decisions you've made in the past or some um, actions you've taken in the past because the Five of Cups is about healing from the past and focusing on your losses. And um, you really need to focus on what you still have that you can work with. So even though, yes, there might have been some things that didn't work out the way you wanted them to, especially in a relationship, um, but that doesn't mean... You know, you have to let go of the past. Like the water, if something happened, you can't fix it. So you may have some regrets about maybe a past relationship, how things worked out. Um, 
but you still have something that, that you can work with. If you look at this card, there are still two cups that are full. So don't focus on what has been spilt, what you can't change, what you can't fix. Just move on and do what you can from today forward. Because coming up, you have the Ace of Pentacles. Um, this is a time card for December, December, January, February. So the end of this year, you're going to be in a really good position. You're going to be, you're going through a lot of changes this year. And there could be, um, I have to say, the Ace of Pentacles usually means um, a new job coming or job offer uh, where you're going to get be making more money, getting recognition. So that could be coming at the end of the year. Um, nine of Cups, but you also have the Ace of Cups in the reading with the Nine of Cups. And so there's also love coming too. The Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment. This could be a year where you get, where you manifest everything you've always wanted to achieve in love and in career. I feel like there's two, and there's a lot of career energy in this reading. So it's not just love, it's also career success. <clears throat> but the Nine of Cups is in your negative thinking sector. So you have to stop doubting that this is possible. I feel that, um, you know, you want to put energy toward the positive. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can find, if you're not in a relationship, you can say, yes, I can find love. Yes, I can find um, a work environment where I'm valued and I'm paid what I'm worth. And I don't have to put up with toxic energy. Um, and the you have the judgment card here. You know, so this is your environment. The judgment is about waking up, having a spiritual awakening, and realizing what you need to do to change your life. So if you're not living your best life right now, um, you can take action to make changes and to bring these new beginnings in love. This, and the love can be... It doesn't always have to be, um, you know, like leaving a person and starting a new relationship. It could be a new beginning within an existing relationship where you learn how to deal with the person that you're with and you accept what you can change. You know, you try to change what you can and accept what you can't. Um, but it can also mean a brand new existence if you decide to cut your losses. So for people who've broken up with someone, decide, I'm cutting my losses, I'm moving on, there is new love on the horizon. Um, and I'm seeing here the king of pentacles in your wish fulfillment. You're wanting someone like this king. You're wanting someone who is responsible, who's hardworking, who's financially secure. You want a relationship that's going to last. You don't want a relationship um, with someone who is toxic. So if you've been in a toxic relationship and you've chosen to move on, um, that was a good decision. Even though you may have some regrets, you might miss the person, or maybe they have regrets could be the other person that's in this five of cups energy where they're really feeling this they're feeling the loss and they're feeling guilty about it you know like they know what they that they didn't step up to the plate that they didn't could you know that they were talked they realized what they did was wrong and they're wanting to um, they may want to reconnect and because the judgment card can sometimes represent forgiveness um, maybe they're uh, and this usually represents this position represents the feeling of the partner and so I think that if you've left someone or if you're going through some difficulties with a partner, I think they really want to change. They're trying to um, take charge of their life and make changes um, in their habits and their lifestyle. I don't know if they'll be able to do it with this Five of Swords, but if they are, but even wanting to is a good start. It's a plus because you can't change someone who doesn't want to change. You can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. But if someone has a wake-up call, and that's what this is, it's a, it's a card of rebirth. Um, they could be working on themselves so that they can have, you know, be a better person in that relationship. So for some of you, you may have, have to go through some, you may, you may have to be like, you may have had to end something to wake somebody up. So that they realize, okay, I have to make some changes in the way I'm relating to this person. And that could lead to a positive new beginning. For others, um, it could mean that you move on and you find a new love that is much more um, compatible with you. And because the Nine of Cups is a wish fulfillment card. So don't think negative. Don't think that this is not possible. Things are changing. The Wheel of Fortune means a change in your fortune. So if you've been going through a difficult time, you're coming out of that difficult time, and new opportunities are going to be presenting themselves this year. Um, I think it's going to be 
with like starting with a, in a month from now, you're going to see some changes start to happen because we're going to have those eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio, and that's going to be square to your sign. So there's going to be some. It's going to shake up some things, but it's going to lead to new beginnings. Um, the judgment usually comes up when you need to make changes to get out of a rut. Um, sometimes people change jobs. Sometimes people um, leave. You know, you see the truth about a partnership, and you just you know make a decision to leave it, or either fix it or leave it. That's basically what your choice is. Um, so if you realize you can't fix something, and you've been struggling for a long time, you may decide to cut your losses and move on. And that's going to lead to a positive change. It's going to get you out of that stagnant period, and it's going to bring in new energy. Um, the King of Pentacles, if you're connecting with, it could be an earth sign. You might be leaving behind someone that was not so reliable, that was more, uh, you know, here they're here today and gone tomorrow kind of energy. Um, they don't always follow through on their promises. Somebody who could be a little bit of a player or a heartbreaker. I think if, you're, if you've been dealing with that kind of relationship, <clears throat> now you're wanting something more solid, more stable. And this king could be that person. That could be someone, it could be an earth sign, it could be Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Someone who is very down to earth, work, a hard worker, cares about home and family, wants to provide for them. Um, so he's you, he or she is usually financially secure. They have a good job, they have money, they deal with money or land. They may own property. Um, they may not be as exciting as the Knight of Wands, but they're more reliable. They're someone you can count on. And I think that's what you're wanting now. After you've been through this, you know, the roller coaster ride in relationship, you're wanting someone that's going to let something that's going to last, something that's going to bring stability and security to your life. And you have the Nine of Swords here. This is a card of worry and mental stress. So, if you've made some decisions about a relationship and you're feeling guilty about it, don't. Don't stress or don't worry if you're starting a new relationship. Sometimes what happens is, you know, I just got out of this toxic thing and now I'm starting something new and now I'm wondering, is that going to turn, you know, I'm going to go through the same thing. Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? It's like you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. So the Nine of Swords is a lot of your worries are all in your head, more in your head. Like a lot of the things that we worry about never really happen. It's just things that we're anticipating. So, and you you know, you have to work, work on your thinking and keep your thoughts positive um, because you're coming out of a dark time. Don't let whatever happened in the past stop you from embracing the new beginnings that are going to be coming this year. And if it involves change and getting out of your comfort zone, I think you're going to be okay with that as an Aquarius because Aquarius is okay with change. The air signs are usually more, um, although you are a fixed sign, you can be stubborn at times, but you're also very logical. You can see, you know, you're not going to let your heart rule your head. If something really needs to be done, you're going to see that and you're going to take action. And you are going to be feeling stronger as the year progresses, as you see that things are, that the energy is shifting. So don't have any regrets. Don't have any feelings of guilt about what happened in the past. Focus on the future and what's coming in, the energy that's coming in. So let's see what the... Um, what the angels have to say to Aquarius. I mean, the Ace of Pentacles is a great card. Um, it means you can really, it's a tangible card. Like, I, I'm not just dreaming about success, I'm achieving it. And the Nine of Cups is a yes to your question. Like, if you're looking for love, yes, it's on. If you're looking for uh, a better job or more money, yes, it's on. The Ace brings abundance, it brings wealth. You could even meet a wealthy partner. You could meet someone who's got, who's financially secure and improves your life in that way too. So let's see what the angels have to say for Aquarius. Divine guidance. Okay, let's see what divine guidance has to say for you. This is a great card. Um, so be open to messages from the universe, from God, whatever you perceive as God. Okay, trust and follow your intuition. It is God and the angels speaking to you. You are being divinely guided right now. The gut feelings you have, the knowingness, the visions, or the inner voice are all trying to tell you something. 
and it is very important that you trust and follow this guidance. If you drew more than one card, pay close attention to the cards that are either side on either side of this. They contain important instructions for you. These nearby cards feature facets of the message that the angels seek to impress upon you. So let's pull, because it's this card, I'm going to pull some more uh, some cards, to companion cards for this Divine Guidance card. So let's try this one. Focus and dreams. Okay, so this is the Divine Guidance. that you're getting from the angels. Think about what you want, not what you don't want. See, another thing. Guard your thoughts carefully because they create your experiences. Sometimes it seems that our thoughts choose us, but this is never the case. We always choose our thoughts every moment. Our thoughts always have an effect, and there are no neutral thoughts. One half second before you hold a thought, you decide to hold it. So with practice, you can learn to monitor and alter your thoughts. Alter your thoughts. This is the equivalent of putting your hands on the steering wheel of your life. You may believe that your concentration abilities are impaired, yet the infallible mind of God is within your own mind. You can experience remarkable feats of concentration by affirming, I am now able to focus my mind at will. I hold only loving thoughts and my angels act as my gatekeepers in establishing a steady stream of thoughts of love. So focus on what you want this month. You can get it. And then dreams. Pay attention to your dreams right now and keep a dream journal. You are receiving important messages from your dreams. Sometimes you may wake up with the feeling that you have traveled or received instruction during your sleep. You wonder, why can't I remember my dreams? The messages and experiences of your dreams are never truly lost or forgotten. They are instead incorporated into your unconscious so that your higher self's wisdom and love govern your actions. You can more easily remember your dreams by writing whatever you recall immediately upon awakening. Just write any little bit you can remember and the rest of the dream will unravel in your memory. Review your dreams, your dream journal often and look for patterns and themes. These recurrent dream issues signify messages that your higher self and angels are trying to tell you. So this is going to be a month of introspection and um, focusing on self-improvement. And it's going to bring new beginnings and abundance coming into your life. So control your thoughts. Don't be negative. You've got this Nine of Cups here. Believe that you can achieve. If you believe it, you can achieve it. Who's that? Napoleon Hill? Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he said that your thoughts create your reality. Okay, so the new moon in Pisces is happening in your second house. This is the house of money, self-worth, the things that you value, So, and Jupiter is there, so it's bringing abundance. So there's definitely going to be a change in your financial situation. And um, there could be also some changes in your home because you have Uranus in the fourth house. So you could decide if you're getting a better job or you're getting financial support in some way, you might decide to either purchase a new home or make... Um, make um, revisions to your home. Uranus in the fourth house, people could be moving into your home, out of your home, you could be moving. Um, there's a lot of activity going around, like sudden events around home and family. So you make, make sudden decisions. But um, it's definitely bringing in a new beginning. It's, it's a positive energy that's going to help you either make more money, feel more secure about yourself. You're going to be feeling better about yourself, valuing yourself. Um, you're going to get paid what you're worth, finally. You have Mercury and Saturn in your first house coming together at this new moon. So Mercury, um, you could be more communicative with Mercury. Uh, with Saturn in your first house, you may feel, uh, I don't know, you may come across as very serious. And even in your communication, you want to be careful that you're not being too rigid in your communication or too serious in your communication. You want to be, you know, a little bit more down to earth, um, but you're coming up with a lot of ideas. Mercury is the, the, the planet of ideas and communication. In Aquarius, it could be you're having these innovative ideas and you're willing to do the work to manifest them. 
Saturn is about hard work, um, being disciplined, being committed, making a commitment. You might even be signing a contract because, um, so check, you know, but, but you're thinking critically now. How can I change my life? How do I want to be seen by the world? I want the world to take me seriously. And so I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to watch my communication style so that I'm, so people can be aware of all the knowledge I have and, you know, share my thoughts and ideas because they have value. Um, Venus and Mars and Pluto are in your 12th house. So when Venus is in the 12th house, they're, on, they're coming together, trining the North Node in the 4th house. So there's a couple of things. Pluto in the 12th and Mars in the 12th is not, it can bring feelings of rage, like you're angry but you can't express it. Venus in the 12th can be, mean um, an emotional, like it could be a hidden, you, ha you have feelings for someone you can't express or you're keeping your feelings to yourself. Um, so you want to try and deal with these. These are powerful energies. You may feel blocked by people in authority with Pluto and Capricorn. Um, there could be power struggles. You could be feeling angry and you, you, you can't speak up because the person that's angering you is your boss or someone who has control over you in some way. Um, if, and if you have feelings for someone, you may have to keep them secret for some reason or you're not willing to express your feelings. Um, but I think it's time that you do. It's a time of, the 12th house is a very, it's a difficult house because it represents what's hidden. It represents the unconscious. So you may not even be aware of some of the things that are happening. You might be being, reacting based on unconscious programming that comes from your family conditioning, like your early childhood. Because, um, but you have the opportunity to work through this now because it's a trine. The North Node is in the, in Taurus in the fourth house. So it's a good time to really work on those things and release them. Release any baggage you have around anger, around love, around um, power. So if you've had like um, early childhood experiences around, you know, authority figures or power struggles with authority or parents, um, you could get at that now and you could, you know, bring that to the surface and, um, release it because the 12th house is also it's the house of karma it's the house of the end of a cycle a cycle of clearing out and releasing so that you can be a new person like as these planets move into your first house it's giving you an opportunity for a new beginning but you have to do the work of clearing first so um, later maybe next year you're gonna have Pluto moving into Aquarius and that's gonna transform you in a big way so now's the time to work on those psychological issues your blind spots Anything that you are hiding from yourself, um, anything like you're going to find out, you might, there might be people in the, in, behind the scenes either helping you or hurting you. Sometimes the, the uh, 12th house can mean hidden enemies. So um, work on that. Jupiter is sextiling Uranus. So this is really a, a, a opportunity is knocking. When Jupiter and, and Uranus are sextile, um, it can mean unexpected opportunity comes out of the blue. So, and I feel like your financial situation is going to change. You might get a job offer that suddenly brings in more money and now it's improving your home life and your family life. Um, when the full moon, okay, so the full moon in Virgo is happening on the 18th. And that's also across your money houses. So something that has to do with financial your financial situation is coming to completion around that time. You might be um, paying off a bunch of bills. You might be receiving money through an inheritance or some kind of insurance payout. Um, something is going to also be revealed at the full moon. So if anybody's been working against you, you have Pluto in the 12th house. You, that's going to come out too. You're going to see who it is and you're going to know how to um, protect yourself. Um, but mostly, um, this energy, this full moon, is trining Pluto and the North Node. It's forming like a grand trine in Earth. So that brings wealth and abundance. And it makes, so whatever you're doing to improve your financial situation is working. And it's, you're going to be in a more abundant place this year, starting with this new beginning, this month. You, you're going to put plans into action that are going to bring more security, more wealth, more support financially to your life. Um, you have Venus and Mars, like I said. 
moving into your first house, you're going to feel the energy. And the, Venus and Mars move into your first house on the 7th of March. So if you've been feeling, kind of, with Mars in the 12th, you may feel like you've been tired. I don't have the energy to do things. I don't have the ambition. When it moves into the first, you're going to be ready to take action, ready to hit the ground running. And it could be because of a love relationship or some romantic thing that gives you that inspiration. So when Venus moves from the 12th to the first, if you've been hiding your feelings, you may decide to communicate now and tell the person how you feel. And that's going to be an improvement. It's going to help um, the relationship. It'll turn it around. Um, you might have to get out of your comfort zone because Aquarius is not comfortable in, with emotions. You may not feel comfortable expressing your love. You know, uh, you may have kind of felt like, well, they know I love them. You know, I don't have to say it. But you do have to say it. People need to hear it. You need to talk. Be vulnerable. It's going to help. Um, like I said, Uranus is in your fourth house. It's shaking things up in home and family. So you may find that it's hard to settle down. You might be moving a lot or you're feeling like you don't have a secure home. Um, and you're going to want that. I think this new love relationship may... You might decide to move if for some of you. Um, somebody might be moving in, moving out. Um, but basically this month, your, your second house is being activated. So you have the Sun, Mercury, Jupiter, and Neptune in the second house. So this has to do with what, what do I value? What's important to me? Um, am I being paid for what I worth? You are going to, I mean, you have an opportunity to have a miracle happen. You know, Jupiter and Neptune coming together next month. It's like some, some miraculous ha happening that it helps you to achieve, achieve a dream. So you might be making money doing something you've always wanted to do. Something that's connected to spirituality, to teaching. To uh, You might feel like this is my divine mission. This is my mission, why I was put on this planet, you know. Um, and you're going to come up with a lot of creative ideas. We have Mercury sextiling Uranus. And Uranus is your planet. It's your ruling planet. It rules your sign. It rules your chart if you have Aquarius rising. Um, so you're going to be really creative this month and this year. Uh, and new begin. So that's going to lead to these new beginnings. You're being supported uh, by the universe. So keep your thoughts positive and focus on manifesting a dream. There's a lot of positive energy. No planets are retrograde right now until April. Um, so go for it. If, you're, if you have a dream or a goal that you want to achieve, now's the time to think positive, see yourself achieving it. Um, it's coming. Whether it's the goal is in love, whether the goal is career and money, um, things are changing for the better. So release the past. Don't feel guilty over what's gone. Can't undo it. Let, you know, it's water over the dam, under the bridge. Focus on the new. Focus on what you can do now. And you'll be okay this month. So that's my forecast, Aquarius. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, click on the like button. Click on the subscribe button. Leave a comment to let me know if this resonated with you. Um, if you'd like a private reading, click on the link in the description box. And we can get you on the schedule. It'll take you to my website. Um, in the meantime, enjoy March. Thank you for supporting this channel. Um, I love you all and I appreciate your support. And I wish you nothing but joy and love for this month and the coming year. And I'll talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.